let's look now at the order of operations. We'll start by reviewing. Which of these operations do you do first? The plus or the division? Four plus eight divided by four. What shall we do? If we take four plus eight first and then divide that answer by four, we get three. Twelve divided by four is three. On the other hand, if we take the eight divided by four, which is two, then the answer to this is six. So which do we do? Where do we group the operations? We have an order that we have established that we've seen before. We first deal with parentheses, then we deal with any roots and powers we might find, third we deal with multiplication and division, and finally we clean up by dealing with whatever additions and subtractions we might find. Let's look at a rather simple example to start with. First of all, take a close look at what we have here. We have nested parentheses. Parentheses relate as subproblems, things you need to do first. And the best strategy is to start doing things from the inside of parentheses and then working your way out. When parentheses are grouped, they'll often use different types of parentheses to keep where the grouping is clear. So if you look on the screen, you'll see that we have a group of parentheses within brackets. They really mean the same thing, that those are operations that need to be done in the order. So we see here we have the 3 plus 2 and 4 plus 5 need to be dealt with first. Then we move out to the square brackets and deal with that next. Let's see how we proceed. First, we've added the 3 and 2 and the 4 and 5 inside the parentheses. Next, we do the multiplication inside the brackets. 3 times 9 is 27. Next, we do the other multiplication in the brackets. 5 times 27 is 135. Now, I've taken the brackets away. I'm done with them. I don't need them anymore. I've covered every operation that you see that needs to be done within those brackets. And I'm left with 5 plus 135. The last thing I need to do are additions and subtractions. I do that to get a final result of 140. Let's look at a slightly more complex example. I see that I have one parenthesis, 6 squared plus 4. I need to deal with that first. I need to treat that as a subproblem. Then I next need to see if I have any powers outside of that, if not deal with multiplications, and then additions and subtractions. Let's see how this problem goes. So the first thing I need to do is identify the different operations. And here I've color-coded them. I've made the brackets blue, the uh, powers a greenish color, multiplication, division, a, um, a, a lighter blue, and addition, subtraction, a gray. Next, I work inside the brackets and see that I have a power. So I do the 6 squared, make that a 36. Continuing to work inside the brackets, I have a 36 plus 4. Addition is last, so what's in the brackets eventually calculates to 40. I then continue with the mathematical operation for this and see that the next thing I need to do is to deal with multiplications and divisions. I see I have a 6 divided by minus 2, and I see I have a 3 times a minus 2. So 6 divided by minus 2 is minus 3. 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. I've dealt with all of the multiplication and divisions I could find. I now am left with 
additions or subtractions. In this case, you can think of it as additions on the number line. And I see it's easy to group these things if I have minus 23 plus a minus 3, that would, adding those up would give me, all the negatives up would give me a minus 32. Minus 23 plus a minus 3 is minus 26, plus a minus 6 is minus 32. I add the 40, and my final result is 8 from that very complex expression. Let's raise the level of complexity once more. And we'll try to do this carefully, step by step. And I remember I need to deal first with parentheses. I don't see any operations inside of parentheses. They're only used here to make it look clean so that I know if I'm adding to a minus 32, I put the minus 32 in parentheses here, but there are no mathematical operations to be performed inside those parentheses. It's only to make the negative numbers clear in terms of what operation needs to be done to them. I then identify the powers. I need to take the square root of 144 and raise 2 to the second power and minus 3 to the second power. I then identify any multiplications or divisions, and I see I have one multiplication, minus 3 to the second power times a minus 2, and I have one division, minus 32, divided by minus 2 squared. And finally, I look to see where the additions and subtractions might be. Next, I do the powers. That's the, if after parentheses, you need to deal with that. So I have minus 2 squared. Notice that since there's no bracket around the minus 2, I only square the 2, which gives me a minus 4. On the other hand, the minus 3 has parentheses around it, which means that it's minus 3 squared, Minus 3 times minus 3 is a 9. I'm done with the top piece, and now I have to look at the second line and decide what to do next. I need to deal now with multiplications or divisions. Minus 32 divided by minus 4 is an 8. Negative divided by negative is positive. And notice that I've coded for clarity. I've coded the 8 as a blue, indicating it came from a multiplication or division operation. Similarly, I see that I have a 9 times a minus 2, which gives me a minus 18. And again, I've coded it blue so that the operation that it resulted from is clear. I now have left only operations involving, in this case, addition. So I don't need the top one anymore. I look at this and do the addition. I see that 12 and 8 add to 20 plus a minus 18 plus 20 minus 18 gives me the final result of 2. And I don't need that one anymore. So as I go down, I see that I can do this step by step by step, and once I get to a particular place, I can eliminate that place by covering up what was above it. You treat this as a sequence of problems that become ever simpler. Simplify, 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 following the parentheses, powers or roots, multiplication or division, addition or subtraction rule. If you stick within that, you'll find you do very, very well. Let's look at another complex case. I have the square root of 36 plus 64 plus 3 times the quantity. Notice I have three different kinds of parentheses here because I have things nested in different ways. 3 times the quantity, minus 4 cubed, 
divided by the quantity 5 plus a minus 3 squared. First, we identify all of the elements where are the parentheses, where are the powers, where are the multiplications or divisions, and there can be multiplications where you don't see the symbol. For example, 3 right up against the curly bracket means 3 times whatever is in that curly bracket, and we see we have addition-subtraction. Let's start to work on this. We need to treat anything added within a square root as if it were in a bracket so that by the time we take the square root, we're only dealing with a single number. If you have additions or subtractions within a square root, they need to be combined before you take the square root. The square root of 36 plus the square root of 64 is not the same as the square root of 100. You need to do all of the additions or subtractions within a square root before you can do any operations on it. So initially, we treat what's un in a square root, if it's got pluses or minus, just as you would a bracket. We don't need that anymore. We now operate on the next one. We do the inside that bracket, we need to deal with the powers. So I have minus 4, the quantity cubed, is negative 64, and minus 3 squared, notice there's no bracket around the minus 3, gives me minus 9. Next, I need to deal with what's inside the square bracket, because I need to eliminate work from the inside out as much as I can, so plus 5 minus 9 is minus 4, and I don't need that bracket anymore, and I'm done with that line. Let's carry the next one to the next slide. So, uh, originally, we have 36 plus 64 plus the quantity 3 times whatever is in the curly brackets. I wanted to show you the original example. We've got it down to the square root of 100 is 10 plus 3 times the quantity in the curly brackets. I next deal with that division in the curly brackets. Minus 64 divided by minus 4 is plus 16. Minus divided by minus is plus. I don't need that line anymore. Now I have 10 plus 3 times 16. I deal with the 3 times 16, which is 48. I have 10 plus 48, and I have my final answer to this extremely complicated problem, 58. Let's look at one more very, very difficult one before we quit this. Minus 15 times the quantity in curly brackets divided by the square root of minus 9 squared plus a minus 12 squared. In order to do this, since it's such a big expression, I'm going to use a lot of slides and do one step per slide. So the first thing I did here was identify all of the operations that I need to use. Having done that, I look inside the square roots and see that I have operations. Notice I coded the square root symbol as blue for parentheses because before I can operate as a square root, I need to do all of those operations. I see they're in there as powers so that I'm going to deal with all of those powers inside the square roots next. Taking the last expression, moving it to the next page, I'm now going to combine those numbers, add the numbers inside those expressions. Now I have a single number in the square root, and I can operate on that. I go to the next page and operate on those square roots. The square root of 25 is 15. The square root is 5, I'm sorry. The square root of 225 is 15. Starting there, we now look inside the square bracket and I operate on the minus 32 divided by minus 8, which gives me a 4. 
bringing that to the next page, 4 plus 3 inside the square bracket gives me a 7. You see how I'm simplifying this in discrete steps. F now I have minus 15 times the quantity in the curly brackets. 5 minus 7 is minus 2. I'm almost home. Minus 15 times a minus 2 divided by 15 is 30 divided by 15. And my final answer after all of that is... Thank you.